Welcome back. We are here to recap the 1300s. Look at this family tree. It is very wide. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we are going to do this recap as a, you know, celebration of the century completing. So let's get started on this. I think in the future, I am going to find a way to uh, better keep you up to date because I know that 100 years is a long time to only do two recaps. So I'll figure that out. But for right now, let's just go through what had happened. We started with our five Sims, the parents, Hugo and Estrid, and their three children, Christiana, Hugo II, and Alice. So Alice is our main Sim that we started with in 1300. This is such a big family tree. We're just keep, keeping it moving. Um, so Alice grew up as the daughter of the Lord, and she was planning on probably marrying a rich man. It was, you know, the life that her parents had designed for her, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But she fell in love with Milo Ashdown, who was the gardener, and it was love at first sight for the two of them. And they decided to run away together and buy a small farm and become peasants. So that was the main thing for them. And her father disowned her, but her mother convinced her father to let her still, you know, live on the land. Obviously, he could kick her out if he wanted to, but her mother, you know, said she's materialistic. She'll come back, you know. So that is something that that happened with them. Unfortunately, she uh, never even got the chance to decide whether or not that would happen because Alice died giving birth to her second child. So the first child, Matilda, did die, and then we had our Agnes. So Alice died pretty much right away. Then we had Milo. Milo could not raise Alice. Agnes on his own, so he enlisted his sister-in-law, Christiana, to come and help. Um, there's Agnes all grown up, but let's talk quickly about Christiana because she came over and helped us with Agnes. So Christiana had initially been a nun. She was uh, living in the church and she came to our house in order to help us raise Agnes. And uh, while she was there, she met Caleb Vitor, who we all know is a vampire and they fell in love and she decided that she was going to break her vows and run away with him. And the priest tried to stop her from leaving violently, but Caleb killed him and then faked her death so that um, they could run away together and not be followed. And he made her into a vampire and they were living in Forgotten Hollow. And so she started her own family there. She had lots of kids. She was a vampire, so she lives for forever, right? So... Then we had um, Milo and Agnes once again living alone together. And then, uh, unfortunately, Milo then died himself. He was killed by bees. In Agnes wasn't even a teen yet. She was still a child. So it was really tough for her. And so Christiana actually came back, revealed herself to Agnes. But she had to be in hiding um, with Christiana so that nobody found out that she was a vampire and all that stuff. So that is why... Uh, that is how we got to Agnes then growing up and becoming a teen. And that is where her life started. Christiana went back to her family and unfortunately later was killed by vampire hunters. So that's generation one wrapped up. Our heir became a teen. All right, let's talk Gen 2. So Generation 2, Agnes, was our fearless leader. Uh, she obviously never knew her mother. She was raised by her aunt. Uh, her father passed away when she was a child, like we just talked about. Uh, so she spent a good portion of her childhood farming with her father, and then her aunt took care of her. So that's how she became a teen. After that, her life was relatively normal. She met Eric at church and instantly had a crush on him with her uncle's permission. They were able to get married. Uh, that's her uncle who became the Lord, Hugo II, and uh, she completed the freelance botanist aspiration, and she died of old age. So she, she did great for that. Uh, and then her husband, Eric, Eric had spent much of his childhood at sea because his parents were pirates after a brush with death that left him scarred. That was when we got like body scars and stuff. Uh, he realized that, you know, giving up his life for, you know, thieving from people wasn't even worth it. So he decided to become a knight instead and do the honorable thing. And then uh, he was ended up getting struck by lightning. So that was unfortunate. They did have plenty of children, as you can see here. Let me just fit them all in here. There they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven made it onto the tree. And one, two, three, 
four or five of them did end up getting married. So let's uh, really briefly, one other thing that happened during this generation was that um, Eric's brother, Harold, came to visit. Now, that requires me to tell you a little bit about what was going on with Hugo II and his family. Um, he actually had a really cute relationship with his wife, Lady Genevieve. Uh, he was originally betrothed to Mabel, and uh, Genevieve was an illegitimate child, and she was not even an option for him. He knew that after his sister running away that his parents were going to be very, you know, on his marriage. Uh, but actually, Mabel ended up pregnant with uh, Dante Biggs child so uh, because of that they did not end up getting married and he actually was able to talk to Genevieve's father and since her evil stepmother had been um, had been you know passed away her, the father was able to make her legitimate so then she was now the daughter of a lord and she could marry him successfully so that was good for them it's actually funny because later um, after that um, he reconnected with Mabel after both of their their spouses died. So that was really actually kind of a cute way to wrap everything up. But anyway, their oldest daughter, her name was Margaret. And Margaret uh, was one of my favorite Sims ever. I love Margaret. <laughs> she married Lord Hugh Harlow, uh, but unfortunately could only give him one child. And because of that, he took a mistress to give him more children. And because of that, uh, she was very unhappy with the situation. So she uh, had been visiting Milo and Agnes and all of them a lot. So when she was visiting Agnes, um, she got to meeting Harold, who was the half-brother of Eric and um, like it was a pirate, like we talked about. Uh, he was actually running from, you know, he stole from the wrong person and that's why he was hiding out at our house. But they fell in love and ran away to Italy together where they had, uh, they raised her only child, Elric. So the mistress actually ended up being the official wife in the end there. But anyway, that is what happened in this generation. I think... Uh, the mistress, actually, though, ended up marrying Margaret's brother, Robert, uh, and after her husband died, she, you know, got her young boy toy, and uh, he was rich anyway, so uh, they were able to be together. She actually died before her baby was born, so that's why I'm very confused as to how he was born. He may or may not have been a ghost child. His life was actually pretty interesting, too. His wife uh, so he couldn't have children. His wife brought her butler with him and all of his children were illegitimate. And that is um, how he ended up losing his fortune and his children were all sent to the orphanage after after finding out about his parentage. So there's that. Then uh, that is that's generation one. So I mean, generation two. <laughs> so let's head out to generation three here. Generation 3 was a fun one. I really liked Milo's life. So Milo uh, was our our heir, and he was kind of not the best patriarch, but you know how it is. So uh, anyway, um, let me see if I could just say something about his siblings really quick. Bjorn ended up leaving the house, became a pirate, thought it was super cool, met Berger, who became his husband, his mermaid husband. They ended up actually opening an orphanage together, so that was really cute. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll also get to that. Okay, and then uh, young Margaret actually married into the Vitors, so that was nice. But anyway, we have Milo here, and one day he was in the woods, and he met Cecilia. So he met her, and she was, you know, having a hard time. She was crying. She was a damsel in distress. So he took her in, and they ended up falling in love, even though he never really found out exactly what was going on with her and her past. She was very cagey about her past. So uh, one day, they were just hanging out, and the knights come to arrest her for murder. So... Her backstory is that she was an orphan that was adopted into the Axtell family as a playmate for their daughter. 
She was raised to become a lady in waiting. However, you know, the creepy older man in the household was into her and she would always reject him. But, um, you know, they had a confrontation and she ended up accidentally killing him and then she ran off. And that is when she met Milo. Now, Milo's uh, second cousin here, way over here, okay, William. Uh, ended up marrying the young lady from the house, Beatrice, and she had left t for Italy when she, um, after her father died, and she had heard, like, through, like, family connections somehow that where Cecilia was, and so she reported it, and that's how that happened. Also, her daughter is Joan, who we'll get to shortly, but uh, their daughter is Joan. Uh, they died pretty early. Anyway, so... Um, there's Joan. <laughs> so we needed to get Cecilia off of murder charges. So Milo enlisted the help of a lawyer. Uh, here he is over here. That is Judd Godfrey. And he uh, needed a new wife to raise his daughter, but he like wasn't interested in having any more kids or anything. So it was hard for him to find someone who would do that. So in exchange for you know, money. But in addition to that, he was married to Milo's sister, Tora, in order to help Cecilia with her case. And they were able to get her trial by um, ingestion. And so she did survive. And so she was then found innocent. So it all worked out. Uh, but Tora was not happy with this arrangement. She hated her husband. She hated her her stepdaughter and so she ended up poisoning her husband so that she could just walk away with all the money and she framed her stepdaughter but her stepdaughter actually ran and found the Axtell family which is the same family this is like the brother of Beatrice and so the son of the creepy guy that was after Cecilia so um, he ended up marrying Rowena because uh, he knew that if he got Torah thrown in jail or whatever for the murder that he could take all the family money and she was like a noble girl and whatever she had a lot of money so uh, he ended up helping her and getting Torah actually sent to the monastery because she um, you know she wasn't going to be executed or anything because she was a rich lady so uh, unfortunately they both died pretty young and their daughter uh, was sent to to the orphanage and uh we'll we'll get to her a little more in a bit i don't want to go too into that because it will come become relevant again to our main family but anyway that's what happened with tora uh, because only one child had been born luckily he actually did survive to become our heir um, but we needed to remarry and have some more kids so dorothea also lost her husband to the plague and she had a young son and she needed a husband and he needed a wife so they kind of entered a marriage of convenience but they actually turned out to have a really sweet love for each other this is her son hector uh her, so that became our stepson he took on our name and everything so they had a really nice relationship and they had some really good looking kids i mean look at these kids they're they're great um so that's what happened there and yeah, I think that is it for this generation. He almost died of the plague, but uh, his sister pleaded and brought him back and then she died <laughs> of the plague. <laughs> plague times were rough. Um, what else about these children here? Oh, uh, so Revna, this is going to come back. If you remember when I said Mabel married Dante Big, so actually they had a son, Dante the second, and, um, Basically, uh, Rowena ended up becoming smitten with Brother Elric. He was in the church, and she became pregnant with his child. That was That's little Agnes here, uh, named after her grandmother. And she became pregnant, and it was going to totally ruin her reputation because he was not going to take responsibility, and he was going to call her a liar. And since he was you know, part of the church, he was probably going to get away with that. Here he is. He's actually Margaret's child from earlier, so I guess he was kind of crappy like his father. I just thought he was too good looking to not, <laughs> to not have a child. Uh, but yes so uh, he rejected her and uh, she ended up having a breakdown in a public place and Dante ended up helping her and he you know didn't have a wife or anything so and he was getting older so he was like you know I'll take responsibility for you we can get married I'll take care of you and it was very sweet so anyway uh, Agnes actually ended up dying shortly after or I think she died in childbirth so it's kind of unfortunate but um they also had another child that didn't live. So there's that. 
And then we had our Margaret who ended up just marrying into the Vator family and having a good life there. So that is this generation, generation um, three. Now generation four, which is one of the messiest generations. <laughs> we have here Nicole and his wife, Joan. You remember Joan from earlier. So <laughs> I don't even know where to start on these two. Uh, but Nicole and Joan had had three daughters. They had a good relationship, except for uh, Nicole's stepbrother, Hector's second wife. Now, if you remember, we also talked about Agnes. She was Revna and the priest's daughter. She, unfortunately, only had one child died in childbirth, and the child died. So anyway, he remarried to Anne, and uh, Anne and Nicole ended up having an affair, and it resulted in Juliana and um, Luke. So these two kids were their the twins. So Nicole had a decision to make. He felt kind of crappy. He was not a good husband. But uh, we had a test. We tested him and Joan uh, proposed when they were young adults. And I mean, they're already married in game, but I was just using that as an indicator. Would he say no? And he actually said yes. So he decided to work on his relationship with Joan and commit himself to the marriage. Unfortunately, he did end up passing away. After he passed away, uh, Joan actually became friends with Anne. Her and Anne became friends. They, like, went out drinking together. They, you know, had a good time together. And Anne just could not handle the, uh, you know, the pain of being, you know, like, being sneaky, being backstabbing, being friendly with Joan. Two-faced. That's the word I'm looking for. I was trying to figure it out, and I couldn't. Uh, so she did tell Joan about the affair. So Joan was devastated. She did not even know, oops, that was weird. Uh, she, sorry, my computer is like overheating. It is so hot out today. I have the air conditioner running, but my computer is still really hot. So if this gets all glitchy, that is why. Um, but anyway, Joan was devastated finding out her husband had had an affair. And so she had a one night stand with the Lord of the area. So that actually, we're going to go back over here to Hugo's family so Hugo had had a Hugo, had had a Hugo, <laughs> had had a Hugo who unfortunately didn't have any kids. One kid became a priest. So his youngest son, Bate, became the Lord. He got married and had three daughters as well and did not have any sons. Uh, so he had an affair with Joan, which yielded Benedict. Now, Joan wanted to keep Benedict, although everybody knew that she had a baby out of wedlock because her husband died. Uh, but... You know, that was already ruining her reputation, but Bate also did not have any sons. And so he came to Joan and he was like, look, I want my son. I will make him legitimate and uh, no one has to know. We can just pretend that he is my wife's son and blah, 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 blah. So Joan was like, no, <laughs> Joan did not want to do that. So she actually ended up giving the baby to Eric the second and wanted to hide the baby with him but he was caught and they were going to charge him with executing a noble so he ran away to Forgotten Hollow where he fell in love with the vampire anyway so that happened to him and um in the meantime uh, Joan tried to ruin Anne's life by telling Hector about the affair but they decided to work on their marriage which made her even more mad because she was like really my life is the only life that's going to get ruined here so she lost her baby she lost everything and so um, she ended up becoming an alcoholic and was crushed by a horse leaving the tavern. So that's what happened there. Her son, unfortunately, also did get exposed as an illegitimate child. And that is how the Armstrongs took over the, uh, the area of Henford on Bagley and hit the rest of the family was executed. Bate had already died, though. So it's not like he knew that that happened. And then. Uh, Benedict's son ended up in the orphanage. We'll get back to him. But that is what happened with Joan. She was a mess. I love her. So uh, again, Hector and Anne worked on their relationship. And then we had, so if you remember, this is Mabel from earlier from um, the Axtell family. She was in the orphanage where she met Milo. And he was there because like his uncle, you know, ran the orphanage and everything. So they met and they fell in love. Unfortunately, he could not have children. Then uh, Emmerich here came and found her and was like, actually, you're a noble. I'm going to you know, take you out of obscurity, get you a really good husband, blah, blah, blah. So uh, 
even though divorce is not really an option at this time, they kind of pretended like it never happened. It's not like they had kids. It's not like it was well known. They're in a small area. So she got to get a new life uh, out of that. And then we had um, Isabella, who ended up faking a pregnancy with Clement Bennett to get his money. Luckily, she died before all of these children were sent to the orphanage because of his dubious parentage. So that is what happened in this generation. And then we will get on to the next one with our three girls here. Okay, so like I said, they had three daughters, Cecilia, Nicolette, and Millicent. So obviously Cecilia became our heir. When Joan had died, all of the children went to the orphanage. It was actually kind of nice. <laughs> uh, Millicent was sent off to a vampire family. Nicolette, I think, ended up marrying like back into, yeah, back into, because they're stepbrothers, remember, so it wasn't, they weren't actually related. But um, Cecilia ended up in the orphanage for the entire time she was a child. She ended up meeting her dear Alex, and they uh, promised that they would leave the vampire uh, who was running the orphanage and live their lives happily, and, you know, so they became teenagers and got a house together, and unfortunately, it was short-lived. He uh, died in a blacksmithing accident while she was pregnant with their fifth child. Literally not a single child survived except for the last one, and Cecilia then died in childbirth. During that, honestly, it was probably the childbirth, like, she she couldn't have kids, and but she ended up dying, and Emmeline did survive, so their lives were very short, uh, but I did want to say about the Walters that um, I, I just think it's really interesting, so there were two Walter brothers, one of them did not have children, the other one, the second son, did have children, so the the household went to them, and then his child, Ellis. So then Ellis had two children. The first one couldn't have kids. The second one could. I just thought it was really interesting that it was always like the second child that ended up inheriting the estate. But uh, these two did die when they were young. So that happened. And of course, the Walter line is officially over because they only had a daughter. But let's talk about, well, uh, Emmeline was still young. Emmeline then was taken in by her aunt, her aunt and her her husband came and stayed with her. So that was Millicent and Charles. Charles, who's a vampire, came and with their two sons, stayed with uh, Emmeline in Henford on Bagley. Unfortunately, uh, at some point, Charles was outed as a vampire and was killed by vampire hunters. So they moved back to Forgotten Hollow, where they spent their childhood, for the most part, with Regina, who is the youngest child of Christiana. So she's way over here. Um, so yes, Regina. Uh, so they were all in the house together. It was really not great for that time. But Millicent was, you know, getting pets and, you know, just trying to make the best of it. And uh, Charles II made friends with Hildegard, who I believe is yeah, over here. Uh, unfortunately, she did pass. I was going to have them get married, but she did not survive it. Anyway, so Regina's story is that uh, she was in town center and she met Vlad, who was coming back to Forgotten Hollow after being banished by the Vitor siblings and wanted revenge against them. Regina was always a vampire supremacist, so she uh, was happy to take the chance. They defeated all the vampires, killed Lilith, and uh, took over Forgotten Hollow and made all sorts of new rules about like vampires not being able to marry humans and da-da-da. So that is what happened there. And around that time, that was when Millicent was like, maybe we should get out of here. <laughs> so they went back to Hemford on Bagley. And Charles is so handsome. Uh, he ended up getting with Gonora and uh, we became teenagers. Emily became a teenager. The only other thing I would say about that is that we had... Um, we had the current Lord uh, when Regina and Vlad like kind of declared themselves the the leaders of Forgotten Hollow. They ended up having, you know, a fancy ceremony and uh, ended up drinking the blood of the Lord and Lady Armstrong. And so because of that, vampire hunting was, you know, increased and they became enemies of the Lord and Lady. And eventually they were able to catch Regina and execute her at the stake during uh, his son's wedding, actually. So over here in the Tremboli family, um, 
unfortunately there will be no children here even though i wish there were but uh, uh the lord armstrong had two sons griffith and gilbert uh he did marry Sarah here, but uh, they did not have any children. Then he died. And then her sister came in and got rid of her because she wanted to be like the lady of the house. And uh, then uh, we'll get to uh, this situation in just a moment. But uh, yes, yeah, so she ended up becoming the lady after all. So we have uh, actually, where is Emmeline? She might actually be on. I'm going the wrong direction. Uh, so Emmeline. Uh, became a teenager and that kicked off generation six so generation six started with emmeline as a teenager and she had her birthday party and we invited everyone over and she actually autonomously ended up woohooing with one of the bennett orphans way over here uh zwan and so they ended up woohooing and uh she did not want to keep the baby or marry him so Millicent in her last act as the protector of this family uh, decided to take the baby and leave with Zuan and restart her life kind of fresh with him and uh, you know be able to to do that so uh, Emmeline then is getting a, another fresh start and because of that she actually started working at the Lord's house and that is where we are going to uh, kind of spin another story which is that of i'm totally lost in this family tree i think it's over here uh that of uh benedict the second so benedict uh had lost his family's position he blamed the lord for everything he decided to go meet up with vlad and basically say hey i'm gonna get revenge against the lord i know he killed your wife i know you want revenge too i know you're strong let's do this and so they decided to go to the lord's house while um you know, there was a visiting prince to try and totally ruin their reputation and all of that stuff. So they got in and they killed the visiting prince and they actually killed, um, was it not? No, it wasn't Sarah. I forget how she died, but, um, they killed Lord Armstrong. Uh, but when they went to go kill Gilbert, who now became the Lord because he uh, inherited that from his father when his father died, uh, Emmeline, who had been having an affair with him, she's a serial romantic, so she's she's doing a lot, um, but she had been having an affair with him, and she was there with him, he was sleeping, and that's when they came to kill him, and she kind of defended him, obviously, Benedict II was kind of, you know, a coward, so he she was able to kind of scare him off, and uh, then after killing the Lord, Vlad turned on him and killed him and then went back to Forgotten Hollow. But anyway, so Gilbert was so, you know, relieved that he had been saved and so happy from Emmeline. And so he married her to his cousin. And so he could keep his mistress close. And also his cousin is kind of a loser who no one wanted to marry. He's a gambler. He's unflirty. Uh, she kind of hates every moment with him. But, uh, you know, she's taken care of and he's taken care of. And that's kind of the situation that it is. Uh, actually, she is currently pregnant with uh, Gilbert's child. But she did get to have a woohoo with her actual husband, I it's so hard to get them to woohoo because they hate each other. Um, so they did woohoo. And uh, so luckily we'll be able to pass off the child as his. But that is where we're ending the century and starting the next one. I am so, so excited for that. I hope that you are too. I am so excited to start the 1400s. New rules, new gameplay, new wars. It's just, it's going to be awesome. And I really hope that Emmeline is able to have a lot of kids and we're able to play with them instead of having to go find someone else in the family tree to follow. I think Tomkin is next in the list after Emmeline. So I don't, re I don't really want to play with him. So <laughs> I hope that her kids survive and she survives survives so that we can keep playing uh we have not been very lucky so there's that but anyway that's where we're gonna wrap it up yes so you can see that that after cecilia next would be nicolette who married over here and she had um are these all her kids i didn't even write down which kids were hers oh, okay yes so uh she had two sons so it looks like tomkin and his son tomkin the second would be next in line after Emmeline, but we'll see what happens there. And I'm really excited. I am. I love Emmeline. I love how messy she is. She reminds me of Joan, and that was one of my favorite generations. So I hope that you're excited because it's going to be a disaster and it's going to be awesome. So <laughs> I will catch you in the next one for 1400.